Look. Have mercy on me. Have What's mercy up, everybody, on and welcome to this week's episode of On the Bluff. I am your host, Christian Fowler. Joining me, as always, my co-host, Gabe Coon. Gabe, what's up, brother? Yo, oh, nothing much, man. Watched a lot of basketball this weekend. Then sat at my house. I stayed in my neighborhood. I stayed in my neighborhood. I was being I was being a safe guy this weekend. Didn't leave the neighborhood. Well, at no, all? actually, I lied. On Friday, I did go down to uh, to uh, Bishop, but then I came right home afterwards. We had What'd a you nice. Get? It was a nice. F- friends dinner had a buddy in from out of town that i used to room with in uh, college he played safety and then linebacker and then transferred out but um at bishop i will stand on this take it, yeah, it really knows us as the hungriest the hungriest podcast in the world everybody knows us as that it's fair their burger yep <laughs> I don't think there's a I, like it's obviously expensive. Yeah. And on Monday, I think they do the twenty. That you do it. You can get the burger, fries, and a glass of wine for twenty bucks. But it's twenty six dollars normally with fries, so yep. it's more expensive. I'm sorry. I think that's the best burger in town. Yes. I don't think there's a second. I, I don't think there's a really a close second. No, I, you're one hundred percent right. It's, it, it's the same. I, I think we've had similar conversation before. Yeah. It's the same burger they had at Great Canary, which was. Bar none, my favorite in the city. There, it same thing. Melt same the burger. cheese, great bun. The and, and it's weird. They put like the demi glaze around it, even though it, it soaks it up, but it doesn't get soggy. Yeah, good meat, good. Uh, uh ba- the bacon is thick cut, real good. Yeah. And then the, whatever special sauce it is, so good. It's awesome. It's not quite like a uh, Mac sauce or no. like uh, 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 what's the the In and Out uh, yeah, spread. No, it's, it's not, not like, like that. No, it's just, like it, but it's cane similar. Sauce. It's similar, but it's different. Yeah, and it's it's similar, but it's different. It's ridiculous. It's awesome, man. But my uh, Taylor ended up getting the strip steak, yeah, the steak and frites, and it was like it's like fifty some odd bucks. This this strip steak they bring out, and you know how like New York strip is already a tough cut of meat. Yeah, it's like a two inch strip steak. Is it good though? It, the flavor was fine. She likes her meat like rare. Yeah, like rare. Really. Like airing on the side of blue, rare almost. You're a medium so rare guy. She right? ate about half of it, and I ate a little bit more. But it's it was too rare for me. But you're medium rare, typically. Or I you... want somewhere in between medium rare and medium. Oh my god, it's the pickiest thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't like. I mean, I don't How, like do it you, when it's you, when it, a two inch steak. That rare is too what much. What do you for say me. then? I just say medium rare for a nice cut, and then if I'm at like a, you know, if I was at like Outback Steakhouse, say I'd say medium. cook it at medium. Okay. That's fair. But medium rare at a nice restaurant is fine. But yeah. if you get any less than that, it's just like, especially with something that's like that thick, yeah, it's, just, I, it's too chewy. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, don't I don't want a rare steak. I'm medium rare because I, I don't want Like this cold. was rare to the point where the, 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 the middle was almost like airing on the side of like cold. Yeah, no. It was I don't want super that. rare. I don't want that. Just because of how thick it was, just a lot. But it was. I like Bishop, man. Dude, I like Bishop. That awesome. that burger is one of the cheapest things they have on the menu for like their big plates, and it's the best thing they have on their menu. I agree. It's in, it, it's incredible. Yeah, the duck is really good. Like, too, but is but. there is there a second like wh- what other burger would you put up there with that in the in the city? Because I don't think there is one. I mean, like I said, Great Canaries was up there. It's like, but it was like the same thing. But it was pretty much the same thing. You could also, I mean, all of Andrew and Michael restaurants, right? Great. I mean, uh, Hog and Hominy's burger is awesome too. Oh yeah, where well, you got a bunch of mayo on it. You're a mayo guy. Also, <laughs> it's a very similar burger to that, except it's like sesame. It's more smash patty. Smash patty. Yeah. yeah. I had a burger at Pete and Sam's on Friday, and it was really fire. I've yeah. never. I have never gotten a burger from Pete and Sam's. I uh, say that pretty confidently. Okay. This is why. Yeah. Anna Ruth's family loves Pete and Sam's. You're like me. You're you're about to. You're you're dead. You don't really like it, do you? No, I do like it. My in laws love it too. I, I, man. I like Pete and Sam's. I think there is so Listen to this, many though. different better places to get an Italian meal in town. And I know that like Pete and Sam's is a historical one, and people are like latched onto it because of that. And it's like I guess a little bit of uh, I mean like people used to have it back in the day, so they keep going to. It. They've had good times there. Yeah, cool. But it's I, cool. I, I mean, I, I I enjoy going there. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think since me and her have been dating. I've probably been there like seven or eight times. <laughs> so you retired. So you retired so, of it. So I was like, and that's why I told him. I was like, I really don't want like a big plate of pasta right now. Kind of just want something a, a little bit lighter. Not that a burger's light by any means, but a little bit lighter than a big bowl of pasta. 
And I was like, it's like a cardinal sin for me to go to a specific style of restaurant and get something totally different. Yeah. Like to go to a seafood place and get chicken tenders yeah. or a burger or something like that. Like that's blasphemy. But I was like, since we come here so often, I feel pretty comfortable just getting a burger. Yeah. Because I've tried so many different things there. Also, their steak is really good. Yeah. But for sure. Pete and Sam's has a great steak. Know what I like so, about Pete and Sam's? My favorite thing is their corking fee. Their what? You can bring in your own wine and you can oh, open okay. a bottle of wine there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty cheap. That's why that's why uh uh like my friend group will show up to Pete and Sam's. I like I, I like the Grassani's places better. I like Ronnie's and Frank's. Yeah. Um trying to think what else out there Dang. hell i'll go to venice kitchen well, i told you i'll go to venice kitchen over uh pete and sam i told you a, we were at some pasta andrew michael's italian kitchen a couple weeks i still ago. need That's to go still need to go smacking. yeah you were telling me but uh i like their corking fee that i do appreciate pete and sam's for that yeah but i feel like the the, the older crowd in memphis has just, they have like a bunch of nostalgia built up at pete and sam's yeah it's like a historical place yeah for sure me. it's been there i mean forever. still smell little cigarettes <laughs> in there i mean it's beautiful i mean yeah. it's i get it and it's like carpeted up yeah no they haven't yeah they, it's not like they they've haven't done changed any, Upgrades. Much about the damn place. Hell, no. they, I, I I can't remember the last time the full Pete and Sam sign was, was lit up worked. all together. Yeah, I agree. So like, I get it. I understand. But yeah, that was that was a pretty solid burger. We yeah, went and to I, the. Uh, this is gonna blow you all away. Uh, we went to the opening day for the Redbirds on Friday. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you were. <laughs> that, is, that is mind blowing. <laughs> okay, but you were just trying to step out. <laughs> I, okay. just, I don't All know right. this man anymore, Gabe. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I don't know him. Who is he? <laughs> I mean, before he met Anna Ruth, if I tried to conv- <laughs> yeah. convince him to go to a Redbirds game, he'd tell me to go F myself. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, what? That's fair I don't fair. know this man I anymore. I swear, man. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, we had a good time. Okay. Well, it was like her, her family. And <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we had a good time. I, 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 I'm fine with going to Redbirds games. I usually like, I don't even like sitting in the seats. I like going out to right field yeah, with the and, picnic tables. And, yeah, onto the field. Um, during the day on Friday, it was very warm, right? 78 yeah. degrees. It, it kind of tapered off into the night. So I had on like khaki shorts and a t-shirt. And then we go into Pete and Sam's and there's like, it literally is completely slammed. And so they have the AC on because it's so many yeah, people in there. hot. And I, we froze for like i think we were probably there for like two hours we froze the entire time i didn't bring a hoodie didn't bring anything did not come prepared it's a terrible yeah. decision on my part. you don't have a bunch of meat on your bones i, anymore, I really man. don't i don't have enough meat on my bones i to hear be you going into like right now i'm feel my hands no it's cold in here to me, even to me okay you high five me yeah okay yeah, they're a little cold they're a little cold <laughs> it is freezing in here right yeah, now yeah um but yeah, that was Friday. Saturday, crawfish boils are back. Yep, for sure are my friend group. And boy, was it good. Yeah, fire. Did you wear that Dale Earnhardt shirt there? Nope. Okay. Nope. All Just right. A, I need to get a. I need to get some crawfish here soon. Just a gray shirt, I think. Yeah, Taylor's been yelling at me to get her a couple pounds of crawfish. Man, it was good. Yeah, I like doing it homemade though. I don't really like going to the crawfish trucks and picking them up. What do you mean doing it home? Like if somebody picks up crawfish and then boils them. Oh, that's, that's what, what that's I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but like I don't really like picking it up from the truck around. No, our like house. the already cooked. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't really like. I, that. I'd much rather it be cooked. Yes, there. exactly. Because yeah, it always, gets cold very fast. Yeah, I, I've like maybe yeah. I've had a couple of craw individual crawfish that were pre cooked. Yeah. From a stand, like we've always. Yeah. Done, Co- you've done them up yourself. Yeah. I honestly, yeah. honestly thought that Gabe was announcing he's. Got a crawfish pond in his in his backyard. Yeah, that's right. No, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I raise them. Home I grown. raise them. <laughs> hey Betsy, hey Betsy, your time to die. Yeah, I go out there and Taylor picks them out and I and we drop them in the in the boil in the boil. Nice. Yeah, no, that's not what we do. Yeah, but yeah, I don't. I mean, it's usually just way too much to buy them from a stand. Yeah, it's like freaking sixteen dollars a pound. Yeah, bro. it's ridiculous. And like with me and Taylor, we're getting we gotta get like four pounds, probably something like that, three pounds. Yeah, that's that's just that's too expensive for just the for just crawfish, just the crawfish, then filling. the potatoes, right. and then the corn, and then yeah. got to get some libations and drinks. Just too much by the yeah. end of it. Yeah, it's like a two hundred dollar meal. All right, so 
Let's hop into it. What, 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 what kind of tiger? What kind of tiger news do we want to talk about today? We have some basketball that bit. we could get into. Talk some transfer portal. Yeah, I think that's that's probably where we start off. I will say, I don't know if y'all saw this today, but this tripped me out. So, I'm I'm getting used to this, right? Apple, yeah. a new Apple Watch. Never yeah. had one before. Not really a watch guy, but anyway, totally besides, besides the, point. the point. Um, and so it like I turned the ring off because I don't want this ringing all the time, but I get a, uh, it buzzes and I look down and it's a bleacher report notification and it says breaking the university of Memphis has agreed to contract with the big 12. That was fake. Super fake. Yeah. There was a, a fake university of Memphis account had like the same. Yeah. But what did like a FAU fan who did it? So I, I don't no, know. I don't know. But you, so you saw that. Oh, it was Dusty a burner. May, it was a burner. Memphis May, account. Yeah. It was Dusty a burner. Dusty nuts. So, okay. Yeah. Huh? No, this was a no. It was, but it was like it was a, a University of Memphis. No, if you go and look at the handle, is it's that what it is? Dusty yeah, Dusty Nuts. Nuts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, they tweeted that out or whatever. A lot of people saw it. Obviously, y'all saw it as well. But Bleacher Report picked it up. Picked it up, and I had the first notification that Nasty. came up on this watch was Bleacher Report. University of Memphis has agreed to a contract with the Big Twelve. And I was Hilarious. like, wow, that's freaking... I was like, well, wow. we're going to have something to talk about on yeah. the podcast tonight for sure. And then I was like, why is nobody... Like, I wasn't seeing anything about it. And so, like, I go on Twitter and I see somebody... That like, is hilarious that Bleacher Report picked it they up, did. though. They absolutely did. Man, they fooled the hell out of you. Yeah, that, 100%. Like, yeah. It, and I'm I'm not, like, mistaken. It wasn't like... The, I got a tweet notification. No, it was Bleacher Report. I clicked on it. I was sitting there at work with my dad and I was like... Man, Memphis finally pro- got into the big Yeah, field. you got played. I did. That's tough. I did. I'm Hopefully sure they, that happens at some point, though. I'll say that. Yeah, I'm sure they I mean, took, damn. I, I'm sure they took that down within the minute, more yeah. than likely. Like, there probably weren't many people that saw that, but I, I did My rule it. of thumb is if I see one tweet about it, it's not true. <laughs> you have yeah. to. You see one, and then you, unless you know the account is like Woj right, or whoever's right, going right. to drop that news, Pete Thamel. Right. Welcome unless to the first you check eight. their deal, you have to go look it up in the search bar and yeah. see who and, else and, is and picking that's, it up. That's exactly what happened. Like I picked up my phone, I got on Twitter, and I was like, I'm "You're like this seeing, load of crap." I'm not seeing anything, and then I ended up seeing somebody that had like quote tweeted it and called BS on it. Welcome to the first 18 hours after we dropped the Malcolm Dangerous news the other day, like oh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. Pretty Ain't much. nobody responded. Everybody's like, fake news. Yeah, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That was ridiculous. <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous. But, but let's jump into the transfer portal. Let's talk wish list. Okay. And we won't put any parameters on this. They don't. Uh, Memphis hasn't had to contact them up to this point. We can just say... I think we're going to do a individual player that we're both going to pick, and then we have right, we have one someone. guy. We we did our pre-show meeting, and we figured it out. Yeah, our really really put together, well orchestrated this is the pre-show one. meeting. This is the one though. The one guy we'll get to. Yeah. So there's no parameters on it. It's not like yes, Memphis has contacted them. It's just who are the players in the portal that you would like to see at the University of Memphis next yep. year. I'll roll the red carpet out for you. Let All you right, start I'm going to start um, before we get to the one we definitely agree on. I'm going to go Terrence Edwards Jr. from uh, James Madison. The reason I like him, 17 points per game, right around four, four, rebounds. four or five rebounds, yeah. three assists per game, only about two turnovers. He can handle the ball. He's big. He uh, can score at, at really two levels. He's good in the mid-range, good at getting to the rack. Uh, I think he shot around 50% from the field last year. Yep. Uh, he's not that great from the three-point line, but he can put them up at times. But what I really like about him, and I think we're going to find something very similar with all the guys we bring up he can get up and down the floor he's got great athleticism he can jump into passing lanes and he's got great defensive upside I think that's what most of the guys will bring up regardless of position one through five that is what you're looking for because I think Penny is in this spot where uh, considering what he recruited last year he got a bunch of talent but he wasn't able to mend his his side his his style to sort of fit them. Now he's got to go into the portal and be very serious about who he's attacking and getting. Um, It's got to fit his defensive style, his defensive identity, and you'll have better results based on that. Now I do still think he needs a scorer, which is why I I like Terrence Edwards Jr. because he does bring the defensive side, but he also scored 17 points per game on a James Madison team that lost four games this year and upset Wisconsin in the round of 64 this year. So he has that ability. He's been in the NCAA tournament. He's been the lead guy 
guy on an NCAA tournament team, and he he knows winning basketball. Yep, I'm gonna go a, a different direction, different position, but much in the same vein that you're saying. It fits Penny's system, it fits his style, and I'm gonna go pretty much to the antithesis of what Jordan Brown was and Cliff Amore out of Rutgers. This is a player that Memphis recruited out of high school, so Penny has connections with Cliff Amore. Like I said, talked to him, recruited him out of high school. It was a guy that I interviewed. Kenny, I don't even know how long ago, ago that yeah. was at this point, probably four or five years ago. It'll be ago. his fifth year? Yeah, I think point? he's a fifth-year guy. Um, so been a minute, but I can vividly recall talking to him and just recalling how – good of a person he seemed to be he's one of those guys that came from overseas i believe he's nigerian and just in my experience of how many recruits that i've talked to and players that i've talked to typically those guys like they're they're sit and forget like you don't have to worry about those guys they're high character guys um you can give so many limitless examples yeah of of the way that they've come over and they just kind of put their head down and go to work but cliff amori uh, definitely seem to have that type of character, character, and he's proven it at Rutgers this year. Ten points, nine rebounds, nearly three blocks per game. He's not a big, hefty center. He's you know six eleven, probably two thirty, two forty, somewhere around that mark. Can get up and down the floor, Huge. block shots, rebound the ball, can score. Uh, scoring came down this year. He was thirteen and a half last year, uh, ten and a half this year. So he's not a guy that's actively commanding all these touches right. in the low post like he's someone who plays within an offense and isn't like a centerpiece of an offense so I, I love the fit that he has with Memphis we know their need for bigs with Malcolm gone with Jordan Brown gone with Naquan Tomlin gone uh, the importance of having that big has been so paramount for this yeah. team throughout Penny's tenure and they've been hit or miss and this is a guy that's proven as we're saying, is a fifth-year guy. Previous connections with the staff has played at a high level. I think. I think it's just a very good fit. We're officially at the point, though, when it comes to bigs, especially with a Penny Hardaway system and what he's going to want to do with those bigs. Don't look at points per game. No. Don't. Don't even get sidetracked by that conversation because we saw it with Jordan Brown, nineteen and nine. That doesn't translate to no. what he wants to do. Um, but I like I like that because he can run the floor like a madman, yeah. and that's what you need. You need a rim running big in the yes. system. Hundred percent. That's what you need. Naquan Tomlin. Ex exactly, and you know he hasn't. He has, I mean, outside of Naquan, it hadn't really been that for him. So I, I just want to see him. I want to see Penny find somebody out there like that, and I think they tried to do that with Ko. A yeah. couple of years ago, but he just wasn't as talented as he should have been. He right. couldn't really catch the ball. The yeah. athleticism was great, but he didn't really have a bunch of basketball skill. Yeah. I think Cliff Amore, I think that's you, you you take that athleticism, maybe a little less height, but a lot of he was he's a two time what defensive player of the year and at, at, I believe at uh at Rutgers. At Rutgers. Yeah. I think he's something like that in the yeah. Big Ten. So that's exactly what you need. Exactly. Just fit it. Just fit it that way. And I saw, and the reason I bring this up as well is I was just scrolling through my ex account, and Eddie Lampkin Jr. was a big guy that uh, played at Colorado, really good player, and I think he lost a little bit of weight heading from last year into this year when he transferred to Colorado. And he had a good year, 12 points per game, eight rebounds, something yeah. like that. Where did he come TCU? From TCU, yeah, yeah. but uh, Penny was involved with him last year, yes. and now that he's gotten in the portal again for uh, Colorado, I, th I think I saw Memphis at plus 1050. They had the fifth shortest odds to be his next team. And yeah. by the way, if you're betting on on – you're, Eddie Lampkin's next team. I think if you click lock in the bet, it should send you to the uh, one eight hundred. Immediately yes. send you to call the one eight hundred gambler yes. number You're because that's ridiculous. But I did see that. I get, maybe they feel like uh, Penny will try to get involved with him, but I don't think stylistically that would be. I don't either. I don't think that'd be perfect. I do think he's better in, than Jordan Brown stylistically because yes. he will try to run and he will have better conditioning. And he was way more consistent than anything Jordan Brown put on the floor this Fair. year when he was playing with Colorado. But I think that Cliff Amore, somebody like that, who just doesn't command those offensive touches, who plays a bunch of defense, who's going to get up Selfless. and down the floor, is who you need. Yep. Who can play extended minutes, play right. 35, if they 40 minutes a game if they have to. Yep. I think that would be necessary. Now, the one guy that we agreed on, and in my opinion, there's going to be some really good transfer portal additions this offseason. Absolutely. I think for everybody in the country, this should be pro he should be a top three guy on your board yeah. that you should be going to look for if you need guard help. And who's the guy? 
PJ Haggerty. PJ Haggerty, man, from Tulsa. Tulsa. And uh, Hitman Hoops, our, our guy here at uh, Bluff City Media, has said that there is a reported, per sources, reported mutual interest between Memphis and P.J. Haggerty. Now, with P.J. Haggerty, you're going to have a lot of takers out there that you're going to have to deal with, Absolutely. and you're probably going to have to uh, bring in some NIL money, go make some, make some things happen. But he was a freshman last year it's at Tulsa. He's 6'3", about 200. He's got a good build. Uh Really, really good score. 21 points per game, uh, right around five rebounds, four or five rebounds yeah. per game, even though he's not the biggest guy on the floor. And he had about five assists per game. And I think he shot right around 47%, 35 some odd percent from three. But you have three years to build with him, theoretically. If you bring him in here, he's not going to show a one-and-done rental guy. And his skill set is, I'm going to be honest with you, I think – if you liked what Kendrick Davis did two years ago, he played in this conference at a lesser school, and he understands this conference, and he scores at the same type of level in the same type of ways as Kendrick Davis. And I think even compared to Kendrick Davis, more defensive upside because of his athleticism, his height, and everything else, right. and his length. He's just a bigger human being. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it makes a ton of sense. You know, you know, you and they did sort of do the in the remember the yeah. earlier this year they did sort of the nudge nudge yeah. David Jones and Penny talking to PJ Haggerty in the right. uh, the post game uh, handshake line. Exactly. Uh, I, I think to me, among others, one of the biggest reasons that this makes so much sense is one of the biggest issues this year that we saw, or that we think, kind of speculative is that these guys, they were just here for one year and gone, yeah. and that was it. So how much of a culture can you really build around that? How much can you bring in that sustains from that with guys only coming in for one year? And as you're saying, theoretically, you know, we don't know where his NBA stock will go. He's not like the most athletic or the biggest prospect, so he could be a guy that stays three or four years uh, I, I love that. I love bringing in these guys that are proven as true freshmen and true sophomores that can contribute for multiple years and help build a culture. It's something, a common theme that we've talked yeah. about uh, over the last month, at least several weeks. And he just makes sense on pretty much every level for a lead guard in Penny's system. And then you also have the fam familiarity with the conference and I know some people get a little bit confused by the intra-conference transferring because in football you don't see that as much, but it's really not as big of a deal in basketball. Like you're not trying – you know what I mean? Like yeah. usually if you're transferring from a smaller conference or a non-Power 5 you're trying conference, to get, you're going yeah. to a Power 5. It's not really the same in basketball, uh, especially if you're going to a school that, like Memphis, that is well-known for basketball and has the ability to be a bigger basketball school. So – that's not the roadblock that it is in football for our uh, more football lenient yeah. fans. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I think it. I think it makes sense for both parties. And yeah, I, but you, PJ Haggerty is going to have a lot that makes sense for him this offseason. That's fair. But I wonder you, I when like transfer portal rankings are officially like sort of set in stone after the season once yeah. we get done with the national championship. I. Where do you think he'll rank? Like according to two four seven on three, he'll probably be a top three, top five guy. I don't see why he wouldn't be. And I think it has to do with, yeah, 21 points per game, but his age. He's right, 19, about to be a sophomore. I, I would scale it back a little bit. Really? Top 10, top, though. I would say top 15. Okay. Just because do you know the just how many I mean, Kendrick players. Dave, think about Kendrick Dave. He was one. He was yeah. one on most transfer portal yeah. ranking. Yeah, but yeah, he had that, done it for three years at exactly. that point. Exactly. There was a little bit more longevity with that, and the transfer portal wasn't as big then as I it guess. is now. You don't see as yeah. many – players or you didn't see as many players in then as you do now and also i think there's a lot of conference value and name value that's going to be in the conference or in the transfer portal and sometimes people that make those lists tend to look at those things a lot like there could be May, a guy, yeah they see he's from tulsa and they're like yeah eh, yeah he averaged 21 points but he's at tulsa yeah and so some, i think you'll get some of that as well so i would say top 15 top 20 at worst, I, I I mean, I think realistically, I think he should be a top 10 guy because of not only the production, but the age. But I I just know those industry rankings. In my sometimes. rankings, he's going to be a top yeah, three guy. How about that? No fair. matter what, my my rankings, top three. That's fair. I have a question for y'all. Um, 
about Memphis in particular in the transfer portal. Um, you've guys mentioned now you guys have mentioned three guys um, total that that are kind of on your wish list. You've talked about Eddie Lampkin. You've talked about all these different guys. What are y'all's thoughts on the Tigers moving forward? Like, do they recruit the transfer portal? as if David Jones is back or do they recruit the transfer portal as if David Jones isn't back? Um, I think you recruit it as, as if he isn't back until he gives you the word. Agreed. Um, but does that change who you recruit then? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, you can never have enough wings and, and backcourt guys. So I, I don't think it changes all that much. And if you were able to land a guy like PJ Haggerty, just find pieces to fit around. Him. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But like, I, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm sort of – with Memphis, it just feels like these things, when it comes to somebody who may be off to the NBA, who's sort of going back and forth, it feels like these things don't tend to work out for the Tigers. Fair. And I guess that the Lester thing kind of bothered me a little bit because it was like it, you really thought there's a real chance. DeAndre last year, they thought that they could get him back. That didn't work out. I know that was a different situation, but I don't know. I don't think you can just count on D, uh, uh, David Jones being a part of the fold until he tells you he's coming back, which you will welcome him with open arms. Yeah, yeah. Come right back. Yeah, we'd love to have you. I think you should recruit as if you're trying to put together a brand new team. And for Penny, he just needs to find guys that are – that's why P.J. Haggerty I like so much. I, I want him to – if he wants to make this thing more sustainable year to year, you mentioned it already – Find more guys that have more eligibility that you can keep around. I know how hard it is to like retain your roster in the off season, so that may keep you, you know, that may be in the back of your mind always. But I want him to find guys that have multiple years. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You don't ever put all your eggs in that basket until it is one hundred percent done. You recruit an entirely new it, team, and worst case scenario, uh, I'm sure there will still be plenty of time. You tell. If you feel like you over recruited in that area, you say you know there's still there's still time. We now know that he's coming and, back and he's going to be our you know one at the spot. And we don't have a ton of minutes in flux. It, maybe go some find somewhere else where you where you can fit in and, and and get a couple more minutes. That's just the reality of the transfer portal. Like now, that's not a that's not a good coach bad coach or good ethics bad ethic, ethics thing. That's right. just the reality of the transfer portal. So I think worst case scenario. You recruit all those positions, and if he does decide to come back when you have people in the fold, then yeah. there's still enough time to, to go find someone And else. I think – I just don't know. You can't build a roster around someone who you think is 50-50 to return. Not at like all. that That's the problem I have with that question almost, Kenny, if you get what I'm saying. Like just to sort of like assume a guy who very well could leave, Yeah. just assume he's going to be back, I think that would be a very bad way to go. And I do think – I. I think the best idea for David Jones from a money perspective, from a chance to sort of raise his his ceiling, I, I very well could be at Memphis. But I think there's more hoops than, than we're given credit for that they're going to have to jump through because he is over here on a student visa and everything else. Now, Kenny, I know that you know more about collectives and obviously you, you understand it a little bit more. Uh, what do you think about the chances of him returning to, to Memphis? Like what? What do you really think? Mm. I I think he's gonna do exactly what I think. The you brought up Lester Quinones uh, a few minutes ago. I think he is going to do exactly what Lester Quinones did. I think he's gonna more than likely he's gonna declare for the draft. He's going to test the water, test the waters, and he's gonna enter the transfer portal. Because really, transfer in, portal. In the end, you can come back to Memphis just because you enter the transfer portal doesn't mean. But you just open. But he's going to open. He's going to field off. Broadens offers. his 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 opportunities. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like you broaden your opportunities when you do that. Like, Oof. and so you can't blame him on that. Either. You can't blame yeah. him on that at all. And and I think that Memphis fans, there'll be some fans out there that'll take that huh. if that if that happens, they'll take that to heart. Definitely. Well, I really hope that that. They listen to this and just go. He has to do this. Yeah, like yeah. this is for him. It would be it's a mal smart. It's be, a smart business thing. For it'd be him malfeasance to do. for him to not. Yes. Right. Like the people that are in his corner, if they're telling him, <laughs> "Hey, man, just it's either the NBA or Memphis." Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, the, 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 let's be real. The frustrating thing, though, about year after year waiting on guys like this, is Penny has said for the last two years he wants to get these things done by what 
June, June, July, uh, something like that. If you're waiting on David Jones, you ain't getting it done by June. No, no, that's exactly right. <laughs> like, that thing- it's gonna be way late in the calendar. Everybody wants like these immediate announcements from yeah. David Jones. You ain't getting one anytime no, soon. No, not yeah. at all. I agree with that totally. I, I, I just think he's gonna do that, and I think that he's gonna get his input from the combine or not the combines, but the 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 workouts that he has yeah. with the different school, uh, the different uh, programs, the different franchises, and. You know, I could easily get his see, best advice. Yeah, and move get his from best there. advice, and I, I could easily see him. I, I mean, one thing back, that's so right? weird though is like, if you are a foreign player, you can't make nil money on foreign soil, which is in the U.S. Right. Uh, it's, it's just, a, they need to they need to find some way to like change this yeah, around. It's a student visa. We have like, a lot. We have a lot of foreign players that are very like Vlad Golden from FAU right. just got in the portal, and he can't because he's over on a student visa, and it's like I. <laughs> We have too many good players from other countries that for that to have be earned rule. nil money, right. and they should be able to get it a lot easier. Yeah. Well, there's ways. I mean, there's ways. There's to ways, navigate but that. It's, it, it, should, it almost it, becomes back channel and sketchy. Right. And you know, I thought that's what we were kind of trying to avoid, avoid when we yeah. when we instituted nil. That went out. Of, that went out of the the window a long time ago, bro. Because <laughs> it, it also wasn't supposed to be used by the schools to recruit. No, so, I get it. I, well, we, but we know that that's caught up in court, and Tennessee and Virginia are going to win that case yeah, convincingly. Convincingly, because there's because yeah. it, this is what I always this was my argument about that whole thing. Oh, you can't use nil as a uh, recruiting tool. I think by by just definition of like when I go on X and I read a story about USC and how they're pouring a bunch of money into nil. Isn't that in turn like that story being out there and the chance of a recruit reading that? Isn't that using nil or almost a recruiting? Re- like I know it's like back channel and a little different than literally saying, "Hey, we're going to give you six right. million when you step on campus." But it's the same. But thing. it's the same idea. And I think in any open market, free market, you know, business, whatever model you're in, why the hell would I commit to somewhere without knowing how much I'm going to make? That'd be like me, like with ninety two nine having another uh, job on the table, but I just take one right. not without knowing, knowing, not knowing what the right. salary is going to be. Like no one does that. That's well, not that, how this works. Contracts. It's not it, how life works. The problem is the problem. I think lies is in the. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's the Iowa kid, right? The kid from Iowa this past week, um, football player, who played for God, he played for some major P five school. Transferred oh, Caden Proctor K- yeah, uh, from yeah. Iowa to Iowa Alabama. To Bama. Tra- oh, Alabama to Iowa. Then he said he was coming back to Iowa, got a bag from Iowa. He made like a fifth of his NIL deal up up from Iowa. Up Over front. 57 days, I think, is the yeah, amount right. of time he was at Iowa. And then went back to Bama. And then went back to Bama. Yeah. And, and that, well, that money is gone. And, and so, Well, in that part with the transfer portal, with the way it is right now, everybody can go anywhere penalty free. Like exactly. that. That's another issue that we're having. Yeah, I just think sure. that. There, there's just ways to like. It's all about the structuring of <laughs> yeah, yeah, contracts. The deal are, itself, contracts I, are real deal, and they should be done because that's how legally tax tax wise these guys are <laughs> able to do what they do. But these NIL collectives have to get a little bit more um, savvy savvy in and, terms of how they structure those. An contracts. interesting thought that I saw out there, Kenny, and I'm going to bounce this off both you guys is somebody I saw suggest multi-year contracts with the NIL collective, right? But with the multi-year contract, um, depending on how much money you make, if you end up opting out of that contract and going elsewhere in the transfer portal, this is a contract where you'd have to pay 50% back of what you've already made. Good luck now, I think that. the issue then and runs, you're going there, Kenny, what top-level recruit is in his right mind going to sign that shit? That's fair. Because he doesn't know if that coach is going to get fired, if he's going to be gone. It would it would be stupid for them to sign. And yeah. but that would be sort of the if everybody got on board and that's the only way you could go about your nil. You'd have to. Then then you'd have but, to. But not everybody's going to hop on board with that because yeah, I, I feel like there has to be a middle ground between where it's at now and the situation that you're mentioning. Right. Like, yeah. like we're saying, there just has to be more structure to it, and that's that's going to be a while because you know it what? is going to be a while because it's kind of. We are in the very beginning stages in the forefront of this, and when you're at that point in something, it's messy. Then, yeah, where it's messy. Then getting these bylaws and these changes and, and and different structures to it, it's just something that takes time. When they see the holes, and they're like, "Okay, we got to fix this. Yeah, we got to fix this. We got to fix this to make it more, uh, to make it make more sense for the players and the universities 
try to make sure both <laughs> that, of them are protected. That Caden Proctor thing, though, was like the first time. Yeah, that's what I, I have. I've never felt bad for Iowa football. Yeah, I've just never have. Yeah, especially with like the the racial inequity thing that happened there with Chris Doyle, their um, strength coach, and he had to get fired. Like I've never really felt bad for them because I always thought. I, I'm, I like Kirk Ferentz. I think he's a good coach. I just don't like how he runs his program. It's all buttoned up and just, meh. Yeah. It's just boring. Yeah, not right? fun. It's not fun. Um, but that Caden Proctor situation, that was the first time where I was like, Dang, I kind of feel for the university on that one. Yeah, that's a tough well, one. Did y'all, well, they, it's they, crazy. they got a bunch of people in working class America right. and Midwestern farming America the to give them of- money to go get Caden Proctor. <laughs> yeah. They raise all the money, and then Caden's like, thank you. No, thank you. I'm getting going the hell back, out of here. Going back to Bama. I mean, it's crazy. Like, you, and there, you it was saw- like a coming home thing because he's from right. Iowa. Yeah, exactly. He had committed to Iowa. He was committed for two years, and then yeah. Alabama swooped in at the end and got him. Yeah. The crazy part about it was Kirk Ferentz gets up there and he says yeah he took about 50 percent of our nil budget and immediately the next day the collective's director came on went went public and was like no he did not no he didn't no he didn't because (laughs) because that's not right like that's that that actually is breaking a lot of bylaws yes that's actually not how nil is supposed to work and so the problem i think with what christian what you're talking about and gabe in terms of the the contracts of like how to you know, if you do leave before your contract's over and all that, it's this idea. I think coaches are more concerned about negative recruiting than they are about anything else. Mm-hmm. And if a school or a collective or whoever it may be, a head coach decides to sue a player based on breaking an NIL contract, the negative recruiting out of that would be insane. Yeah, yeah. but they'd also you'd have to have a way to actually sue them. Yeah. yeah. You know so, what I mean? Like, and I bet the, these contracts probably. No. The contract he signed was probably looked over a million times by his whoever his agent his is, marketing agent, his representation. Yeah. And they probably made it ironclad to where, hey, if I did want to get back in the portal in 57 days after I have some beers at spring break with my old Alabama teammates, I can do that. Yeah. So, well, that, that was just a weird thing, though. And it kind of cracked me up because people were saying, you know, this is the first time we've ever seen anything like this. And I guess maybe – in that sense, with a guy at school already going to another school to get NIL money and come back. But let's not act like we don't remember Quinn Ewers going to Ohio State for a spring yeah. just to get NIL money, and then mm-hmm. he left that that after the spring, yeah. I believe, or was it after the fall? The fall. Yeah, so we've seen something like this before. But until they start putting parameters on it, we can, we're probably going to see it more. Yeah. Um, I, I do have to do one final thing before we get into the hot three. I know we've gone long in the first segment. What we got? Lou Esposito, D-line coach. Uh, he got hired, what, two and a half, three months ago yep. as a D-line coach, co-DC here, former uh, Memphis offensive lineman around the 2000s. Um, two, two and a half, three months later, Don't. Michigan says, hey. Hey, buddy. Here's a lot of money. Do you want to be our D-line coach? And he said, <laughs> yeah. And he left. So I, I, I can't blame can't him at blame all. Him. No. Cannot blame him. I, I, it, it cracks me up. <laughs> Listen, I am, I'm a loyal person to my fandom and like to the people that have helped me get places. Like I understand that whole thing. But I'm not dumb enough to deny another half million dollars on top of what I'm getting right. for any job. And you can say that that's not loyal, whatever. But when you're getting paid – double your salary to go somewhere else you do um you're 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 at the peak of uh where you've ever been coaching i mean lou was at western, western michigan, michigan. Yeah. and then at memphis now you get to go to michigan, michigan. one of the just coming off a national championship right. one of the top five jobs in college football yeah. you do it and you don't you don't care who you really offend on no, the way out you do that one no questions asked yeah i i just I, it, some people were offended and some people understood it. i was one of them that very much understood it yeah you there's, have to take those opportunities when they're presented to you yeah there's no way to not understand fortunately for us i don't see uh i don't see old kenny getting half a million dollars more to not produce our show so i think <laughs> we're stuck with <laughs> we're him stuck with him yeah he's I'd stuck take, with hey, us if so. i if i got it you be gone, boys. I love y'all. <laughs> Golly, speaking okay, of, you're speaking gonna of take you and the hot three somewhere else. Hot yeah. three is coming with me, it's baby. Gone. It's on the contract. Read the contract. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, hopefully that doesn't happen. I guess for our sake, for Kenny's sake, maybe. Hopefully it does. But 
We shall see. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back on the other side with the hot three and hopefully still with Kenny in tow. I have no question in my mind that Penny knows basketball as well as anybody on the planet. When somebody is as good and as talented as they are, it can oftentimes be difficult to teach others that may not be as talented as them. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, so we've like seen some that across things, the board, right? Like even in high, right. even in the NBA coaching ranks. Right? So like he's super capable of a lot of things, very impressive on the basketball court, knows where to be, knows what to do. And I, I feel like because he, to him, it comes so easy to him, that he thinks that in teach I should just pick it up right away. In reality, that's not always the case, right? Like some people need extra. It may take a little more effort than you just creating a game plan and having the expectation that they're gonna go out and execute it, right? Like if the game plan's not working, adjust it. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Taylor Jenkins, okay. um, the, the, he had a pass all year pretty much, right, because of the, the injuries all that type yep. of stuff. I mean, last night he said some dumb shit. So, all right, that's, that's why we want your ass up out of here for saying goofball stuff like that, saying that, you know, we had a strategy for uh, for Hachimura, maybe we should have changed it earlier. He did say that, yeah. I'm like, dude, the man knocked down 19 threes, whatever. <laughs> it's like, at, some point, wait, at what point did you realize that your strategy wasn't working? Mm. If Rui Hachimura played the Grizzlies every night, he'd be a fucking Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he'd be a Hall Like, what he did in the playoffs yeah, last man. year and then this year. I think that if you ask me, is he the best in-game strategist and manager in the league? No, I would say mm -hmm. no. The one thing that I think universally he has to be given credit for this mm -hmm. year with all the horrendous circumstances this team has gone through this year, injury, suspension, mm -hmm. everything else, and no matter who they played against, no matter who they have had or not had, they clearly bust their ass and play hard for him every mm -hmm. single night. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. The reason the horns are back, boys, is because I have an announcement. Okay. Yeah. I have rejected a five hundred thousand dollar <laughs> offer to take the hot three elsewhere. Wait, were you gonna and be, I am were here. You, were you gonna go to the ringer? The ringer okay. called Damn. during the break, and I said, "You know what? I love my boys. I'm staying with them on on the bluff." So here I am. Damn, Here's so the hot three. I you turned told, it down. You told Bill Simmons, "Kick rocks. Go f yourself." That's I, what you told him. I exactly. Don't, I don't. I don't believe you. What? I do not believe you. I believe him. That's a talented guy on the other side how, there. How, how dare no, I don't you. believe they turned it down. Uh, <laughs> he's okay. gone after this I have episode. an announcement. <laughs> Here's the other announcement. No, I'm staying, boys. I am loyal to, to the core. I'm glad. Yes, I am. You guys ready? Hot yes. three. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Man, obviously the biggest story in sports right now is college hockey. And uh, no, I'm just joking. It's March Madness, and we got the Final Four locked in place. It is... Purdue, the number one seed versus NC State, the 11th seed. Going uh, on the other side of the bracket is Alabama, the four seed, and UConn, the one seed. Did y'all? Okay, let me just ask y'all this before we, before we get into what we're going to talk about. Did y'all? Is this what you expected? Um, UConn like, and Purdue, hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> uh, Alabama and NC State, no, no. Mm -hmm. I will, even Alabama, you could have made the case. Other people made the case, but when we did our contender pretender series, what, a few weeks back, yeah. I called Alabama pretender, and I'm not going to say I'm wrong about what I think about Nate Oates, but I will say this. He gets a pat on the back for me because, buddy, I never thought you'd make this deep of a run in a tournament because your entire game plan is make shots, yeah. and sometimes shots don't fall. First time more often history, than not, also. more often than not this tournament, they have fallen, 
And one thing you have to give Nate Oates credit for is he brings in talent and he lets that talent cook. Yep. So Another thing simple. you have to give him credit for is he had, we talked about this last week. He had three point guards on that roster sure last year. He chose to kept Mark Sears. That was 100% he the was, right choice. He was 100% right. 100%. And, and what did he say? People got mad at Memphis. They said, or uh, people in Memphis got mad what he said about Javon JQ. Quinterly. But he said, I, I, it's nice to have a point guard that I don't have to beg to show up every night. Mark Sears, you don't got to beg him. Nope. But I'm curious about him at the next level yeah. because he's 6'1", small guard, scoring guard. Usually that doesn't work. He's been so good. But uh, you look at him and his style, and he's a lefty, and he knocks down some threes at a high level. Like, I remember Jalen Brunson was not that highly thought of when he came out, and I see a lot of similarities in that yeah, game. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you at all. So their, their run has been – really impressive and and pretty unexpected but not as unexpected as nc states yes and they have laid down some <laughs> after after beating oakland they've they went through a pretty decent gauntlet i wasn't so sure about them beating duke uh you know duke had been on a tear for themselves jared mccain had been one of the players of the tournament up to that point up to the elite eight and uh <laughs> another player that we'll talk about here shortly in dj burns has also been a player of the tournament, and uh, his team moved on, and now they get the uh, the luxury of facing off against Purdue in well, the Final Four. I uh, I never thought like NC State lost seven games in the regular season, right? And if you even rewind to the ACC tournament, if they would have like if Virginia makes a free throw, the game's iced and they can't come back and tie the ball game. But their play of the year so far in this nine game stretch in 19 days, nine wins, their play of the postseason is a missed free throw from Virginia. Michael O'Connell, their point guard, grabs it and banks it in at the buzzer for a tie game at the end of OT, 58 to 58. Yeah. If that never happens, they never make the tournament. We never know about DJ Burns, what he could have been in the tournament. He's the darling. They're America's team right now. Yeah. Because of DJ Burns and what he's been able to accomplish. And it was kind of funny watching that Duke game, him putting his shoulder into Mark Mitchell and Kyle Filipowski and just watching those guys wither into dust before Duh. our eyes. They Dude. both fouled out. They were so he had 29 f- points. I that was so fun to watch to yeah, me. They were so defeated. Kyle Filipowski. They're was begging for so they're begging defeated. for foul calls, but it's like no, he's just he's doing what he can. He can drop his shoulder and right. move you back off your spot. That's what he. For God's sakes, he's six nine three fifty. That's what he's there to do: is to put no, his no, shoulder no. at you to move. He's you listed the spot. at two seventy five. Oh yeah, two seventy five. My ass. We'll get to that in a second. There's no chance in hell he is two seventy five. You did try to before the show though. <laughs> You're like he's listed at two seventy five. I'm like I don't give a damn what he's listed yeah, at. It's fair. <laughs> it's fair. All right. So for these final four matchups, Purdue and NC State, UConn and Alabama predictions. Purdue. UConn, UConn wins it all. Chalk. Yeah, very chalk. Yeah. Because, I, mean, I, I mean, I the the one I actually have more uh, hold up about is, uh, is NC State and okay. Purdue. I, I don't think Alabama can beat UConn. I don't either. My problem with UConn is, like, play whatever style you want to play, right? You want to be you... up-tempo and shoot threes. You want to uh, just get in the half court and play defense. They will beat you at whatever yeah, style where, you where, think you're good at. They're better at it. Where is anybody in the country better than UConn? Did you see what they did to Illinois, man? Yes. They won by 25. It wasn't even close. Illinois was the second best offense in the country this year, first, according to Ken Palm. Terrence and Shannon, they scored the, 52 points. Right. Terrence Shannon's been one of the best players in college. UConn went on a 30 0 run 30-0. from the end of the second half, or end of the first half, into the second half. 30 0. It was a 30 five. to 9. It's, it, it's not even fair. It was 28 to 20. The team that won the Big Ten Conference Championship, the tournament, got dull. Got abs. Dull. Murked. Yeah. Blown out of the water. And it's like, I, I, again, I don't care what style of basketball you think you're good at. They're better at that style of basketball it's than you so are. so true. It's just unfair. It's uh, <laughs> Danny Hurley is really good at his job. Yeah, he because is. Because I, I was debating this with people. It's like, okay, they have good talent. But is their talent, like, would you sit there and be like, I look roster to roster, starting five to starting five. Is their talent, is their starting five that much better than everybody else's around the country? Is it that much better talent-wise? I don't I mean, think so. I mean, 
I don't think so. I mean, Stephon do- Castle's a five star guy. Tristan Newton. But Tristan Newton is a three year transfer yeah. portal guy. He's yes. been in college for four years. Don uh, uh Who's the other guy? I'm, uh, Cam Spencer is a transfer portal guy who's yep. been in college for four years. Donovan Klingon, yeah, he's good, but this is his second year. Yep. Alex Caravan's fine. But like, there's there's probably more talented Talent? rosters yes. yeah, yeah. in in college basketball. But the way they play together, the way they there's like the Denver Nuggets to me. Yeah. In in the NBA, it's like okay, yeah, there's more talented rosters and more all stars per capita but on nobody certain teams. Plays but nobody better plays together, together better. They yes. just don't. Yeah. And even the bench guys know what they're doing. And just watching Danny Hurley and the the you know understanding he has of his team. Did you see their three point shooting? Yes. In that game. Yeah. Three for seventeen from three. Yep, and they won by twenty five. I mean, I just, I, I, I don't know how to paint this anymore. UConn's going to win this tournament, run it away. I, I know we've seen crazier things in the past with teams that we thought were unbeatable, but it's hard to see. It's hard for me to even imagine it right now. I completely agree. I I think, I think you're right. I think Purdue and UConn. It's DJ Burns is not going to be able to do what he's done. Everybody else, Zach Eady, and and that really takes away their biggest threat. So. uh, I, I, could I see a scenario where NC State wins? Of course, but I just think Purdue is the better team. UConn's the better team. Is there a scenario where Alabama it hits 15 threes and they win? Yeah, sure, but... I think it's not, out there. It's out it's there. Way oh, out it's, there. Yeah, it's definitely out there. Um, uh, UConn and Purdue came into the tournament as the two best teams. It is... It's the best matchup national championship yeah. on paper we've seen in... I can't even tell you how long... Um, so I, I hope that's the outcome that we get. But I'm, I agree, UConn yeah. running away. They're- speaking of which, speaking of which, I'm, what I'm saying is not crazy. Obviously, no one thinks I'm crazy for saying what I'm saying. But have you seen how the uh, sports books have reacted? FanDuel right now, you if you're gonna go take UConn to win the Natty, they have two more games to do it. Minus 185. And then they have a special. This is my favorite special I've seen. UConn or the other three teams in the field. UConn minus 184, the field plus 150. That's how confident Vegas is in what's about to happen. Yeah, that that tells you all you need to know. All right, let's move it on and talk a little bit more about DJ Burns. Oh, let's do it. Come on. Hit hit me, Kenny. As a, I know Gabe is a former football player. Former and by the way, I've been lineman. banging this drum since the ACC tournament, and I watched the ACC tournament. Yeah. Uh, Not to pat myself on the back too hard. Folks are saying that... People, they, they are saying... They are saying that there are credentials available for scouts to come and watch these players play it and like at memphis this year i think at one game against the i guess tulane i think they had like 20 nba scouts in the stands watching the those guys play um specifically probably david jones um there are a lot of scouts that are watching dj burns play but they're from the nfl <laughs> yeah, man. peter schrager reported it and then jim Nagy. From the the Senior, Senior Bowl, Bowl reported it, and everybody's like, "Is this a, is this an April Fool's joke?" No. no, no. And I've been saying this, and people think I'm joking, but when you see a guy listed at six eight six nine with his size, probably about three twenty five, three thirty five. I know he's listed at two seventy five, but you can kiss my ass with that. Um, you see a guy like that with the 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 ability to be as fleet of foot as he is. Right. He doesn't run the floor great, but that's not really what you have to do in an NFL situation right. at offensive tackle. But you see his feet, you see his size, you see his strength. And I'm sorry, I think most guys look at that like frame and they're like left tackle. NFL. And, yeah. and, 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 and most NFL coaches, we've seen this in the past, they have a lot of, uh, of, of pride in their ability to develop. Yes. I think most guys say, give me a summer with that kid. And let's get him at left tackle. And it's not that outside the realm of possibilities that basketball players translate to the football field well. And I know we've seen, like, the tight ends, obviously. Antonio Antonio Gates. Gates, Jimmy Graham. And and Jimmy Graham and uh, Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez. All phenomenal Hall of Fame, all pro level guys that came from basketball programs in college. George Fant, if you know George Fant, who's been kicking around the league. He was a starter for the Seahawks, Seahawks. but he's been kicking around at tackle for a while. He was 6'6", power forward at at Western Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah. and he ended up playing tackle in the NFL. Think about Jordan Mailata, yeah, right? And I know he ex- played rugby, right. but he was 6'8", 295, and ran a 4'7", yeah. and they sat there and they go, you know, we can make him into a good tackle, and by God, they were right. He's yeah. one of the highest paid tackles in the NFL right now, playing left tackle at 6'8", 320, yep. super athletic. So, like, you just look at a guy like DJ Burns, 
And I've been saying this for a while, and it just feels like vindication to see on the back end Peter Schrager and all these guys report. Yeah, NFL scouts are looking at it the way you're looking at it. Yeah, and, and I think rightfully so. Uh, like you're saying, no, he doesn't run the floor like some premier gazelle big. No. But that's not – you're working in short areas yes. to be a tackle in the NFL, and he's shown in short areas <laughs> that he's got hey, sweet footwork for his, his size. His spin move is kind of nasty. It is. It is. It's nasty. No. And honestly – and you tell me how far-fetched this is. If I was him, that's what I would do. Because honestly... What, how, how, what is he going to do in the NBA? Well, I don't know about the NBA, but he could make some overseas money for sure. But he, for he's, sure. Not, he's not going to make... It, let's just say... He's not making NBA money. Let's just I say, don't think he will. I, I, I agree. But let's just say we'll go two scenarios. We'll go mid, you know, bottom, mid-level NFL scenario, highest level yeah. NFL scenario. He could... He has the potential, potential, yeah, to be like a top five paid left tackle in the if, league. If if it all, if it all fell I know right. people. I know that sounds far fetched now, but give him some training and see what happens. Yeah, and at worst, even if he's stuck, he's gonna make more money than he would make overseas. And he's not gonna. I mean, if he gets into the NBA, he's maybe a two way guy at the probably at the best because he doesn't run the floor well right. enough at all. But man, I'm telling you, like I wonder if he'll get talked into it. I really wonder I, if he'll get talked into it. I think it. that business-wise, I think that is the best decision for him. Yeah, although hitting your head on other people that are 300 pounds is usually not the most fun thing. Yeah, I mean, and also I think it does look like he does. I mean, he he plays very physically in basketball, yes. but it's a different. Level it's of physical. it's hundred percent different. I'm telling you, you give you give somebody a little bit of time that knows what they're doing that teaches them how to pass that. He's got those long arms. I just think it would be it, it would be sense. fun to see. It definitely and makes his sense. athleticism is on par with a lot with of a, those guys. With a left tackle. What yes. needs to, like what 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 needs to be the, what like if you had a guy, if you took him for a summer and said, Let's train him, is it technique that he's yes. gonna have to or is it the mental? What's great, well, mental you just sort of have to have or you don't, especially at this point. He seems um, like a so guy. So we'll just has, assume that he, he has it. Yeah. Um but what what you do is uh, sort of mid zone footwork, and you do pass sets. That's what I do with him. That's I I would drill that every, every day, single day, and then I'd say, okay, let's get under a squat bar, start squatting heavier weight, and let's get you benching a little bit more. Yeah. But we've also seen like some of these left tackles are not like the strongest guys in the world. They're just big, barreling, massive human beings. You remember Andre Smith? Yeah. Who was a really good tackle for a while, and then was out. Like he had six bench reps when he came out in the combine, and he still was like a top ten pick. So like some of these guys aren't like crazy, crazy strong. They're just big as hell, and they can lean on guys and move people. And I think DJ Burns could be that guy. I'm just saying, and it's cool to see that that there really is some GMs and scouts keeping tabs on them. Yep. I do not disagree with that at all. Um, I think it's a great idea. Now on the basketball front, one thing that I think people are underrating and they're finally starting to see about him, um, because he's been must-watch for me since the ACC tournament. I have not been able to take my eyes. When DJ yeah. Burns on the floor, I've watched way too closely. His passing ability is kind of nuts. It is. He can see the floor really well. He does. That's an underrated part about his basketball game. But hopefully he's playing football here soon. All right, Kenny, last topic, and let's get out of here. I know this is kind of an older topic, but we haven't had a chance to discuss it here. Our uh, good friend from Boca. Good friend. Dusty May has left Boca at FAU, Boca. And, and now he is coaching at Michigan. Um, what were your guys' thoughts? I mean, like, is it a good hire by Michigan? Did yeah. you? I mean, would well, you? Me and Gabe been beating this drum for a long time now that this was probably going to happen. Yeah. Um, in, I thought it was going to be season. Louisville though, maybe. Well, we, we our, our thing was they end up going get uh who's the guy Pat Kelsey from College of Charleston, which yeah. is kind of funny, kind of weird. Uh, but our thing that we talked about was, you know, with the way this season kind of went for FAU with tougher competition. Like this was the prime time yeah. for Dusty May to run, especially with, you know, Elijah Martin, John L. Davis, Vlad Golden, like all these guys that they don't have much time left. This was the time for him. And if he didn't jump now, then he could have missed out on his opportunity. You, you to would go. have to either commit to rebuilding at FAU or hightail it. And he chose right. to hightail it. And that was the only decision I think he could have made as far as the hire. I think it's a good hire for Michigan. I don't. Yeah. I don't do know you how really? you look at it. Yes, I sure do. Mm, I, I really do. I don't know. I do too. I mean, Kenny has been doing this with me. 
Yeah, and Kenny, I, I really want to hear your like actual explanation as to why you don't necessarily see what it seems like everybody else in college basketball sees with him. And I'll tell you the things that really stick out. 60 and 13 in two years at Florida Atlantic. I don't need to say anything more. Now, yeah, now you tell me. What about the what, other, what about the previous four years before that? He, well, the previous four years before that, Florida Atlantic, when he took over, had 12 wins. The I'm, next year, they had 17 and a winning record. I'm and they saying. never didn't have a winning record when he was at FAU. And he built it all the way up. And I think if you're talking about building up FAU with lesser recruits, when you get into a situation at Michigan where they're giving you more resources, giving you more NIL dollars, your collective is spinning, I just feel like the, the better recruits will breed better basketball for him. And no, he's been to a Final Four at Florida Atlantic. It's yeah. just, if you were looking for somebody else this offseason, I, I think he was he was the number one guy on most everybody who had an openings board, and I yeah. get why. Oh, yeah. I agree. But, no, I get why, too. I just think that I think there's a you level. You think it's a little overblown yeah, because it was I, two years of real success. Well, not even. This year wasn't a success, a success for him. <sighs> You would, is, you would count this year as a, uh, as yes, a success? Yes, I would. He took FAU would. to the tournament. I would. That, Again, that's, that's, the he thing, got, that's the thing, Christian. Is like He got bounced in the I, semis of the AAC. No, uh, listen. I, they beat Arizona. This that's is why where they got I think in. people need to... Uh, when it comes to this year, if you're going ahead and judging them off the fact that they were 30-3 and three in Conference USA a year ago and they made it to the Final Four and they were a top-10 preseason team, I think you're rating them from a place that that where they should, they never should have been yeah, rated that no. high in the first place. No, they shouldn't have. They were a bunch of uh, the, the an island of misfit toys and three- and four-year guys that had to develop their ass off that were two- and three-star recruits. You brought To ask them to go 30-3 and three into the Final Four two straight years – it's just never real because now you have guys that see film on them. They take a step up into a slightly better conference. Target on their target back on in their the back. It's just a different deal. But in the end of the day, I think people need to realize getting to the damn tournament from Florida Atlantic is a win. Is a win. They've only been to three in their tournament in their in their school's history, yeah. and he and went to and he was two of them in back to back years. And here, here's my thing: How many coaches can you hire in an off season? And when you ask the question, "What is their ceiling?" The answer to that is national championship. Yeah. They're few and far between. Right. And with Dusty May, you cannot say that his ceiling is not a national championship at Michigan because he took Florida Atlantic <laughs> to a Final, to a Final Four. Four. Like his ceiling at Michigan is national championship, and there's not many coaches that offer that level of right. success or that you know that, that range you of get, outcome that you can get that quick uh, listen i mean he lost seven games in the regular season at florida atlantic and we're like oh he underachieved it's right. like i mean compared to 10 in the ap poll in the preseason sure yes. but i always Overall, thought that was so dumb yeah i'm just saying i don't think that he necessarily like if we're taking this season in a vacuum started off top 10 in the country they had to squeak their way into the tournament I know Memphis didn't get into the tournament, but they had to squeak their way in. I think squeak is a little overstated, but absolutely I'll go there with not. You. They absolutely squeaked their way in. I don't think. I think a lot of folks that I read <laughs> didn't think that FAU was an absolute lock to be in. I mean, they just. I didn't ever see them on any bubble conversations. And I think because I think because just like Dusty May getting this contract with Michigan, they were a because lot of these of folks year. were living off last year, and and thinking maybe they could do it again. And and maybe they can. And I think listen, I'll say this and and the positives towards Dusty May, his post game press conference at Memphis was one of the most impressive oh, he's a things dude. I have yeah. ever heard in my he's entire life. He's a super bright dude. He was super impressive. I think that he is one of the most impressive post game guys I've ever seen in my life. Um and so could he kill it? Absolutely. Would it surprise me if he's if he doesn't get a second contract at Michigan? No, it wouldn't. Okay. Either way. I think he could do really well, or he could flame out like every other uh, Michigan coach has. That's fair. That is fair. I mean, that's it's a it's a high range of outcomes because there's not a big sample size, but you're going for that high upside swing, and they he absolutely gives you that that level that not many. Coaches who else do. are you gonna go get? That's like, what, who that's else what I'm are saying. you gonna go get? That's what I'm saying. He's a great hire for who else is out there, right? Like, like who the, else? the names that came up were the guys that were disappointed in how their season went and the resource, like Eric Musselman and Mick yeah. Cronin, like. Can I ask you this, Kenny? This is a real question. Of course. Eric Musselman, Mick Cronin, or Dusty May? Who would you, if you were Michigan, who would oh, you have man. hired of like those three? If those were your three opportunities to go hire, who are you getting? 
I am, I think I've said this before on this podcast. I know I've said it on others. I am absolutely against retreads. I'm not a big retread fan. Okay. Um, and so if you are. So then it would have been Dusty May. It would have been Dusty May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I like. I get what you're saying. Big Ten's no slouch. Yeah. You have more recruiting that you're going to have to do, and you have to, uh, you know, compete against those people. But your player pool goes <laughs> oh, drastically. Oh, up. the recruit. Oh, hey, yeah. the the names that they're associated with right now that have come out in the last couple of days is I, pretty insane. I get a I get a big kick though out of Louisville missing out on Dusty May and having to go get Pat Kelsey, <laughs> who is from Winthrop and then College of Charleston. Did he do well at Ch- College of Charleston the last two years? Yes. Yeah. But the the two stats, the two things. That really stick out to me about Louisville going and getting him. He's never won an NCAA tournament game. He has never won an NCAA tournament game. And the other part of this, y'all remember Chris Mack, right? Yes. Failed at Louisville. Yep. Got fired. They brought in Kenny Payne after him. On the first staff that Chris Mack had at Xavier, who was his lead assistant? I'm gonna Pat say, Kelsey. Pat Kelsey. And Pat yeah. Kelsey. So you're you're hiring a guy who was the lead assistant for a guy that you, that you fired. fired. Did three Chris Mack get ago. fired, or did he, I know he got fired? Did he get fired for losing, or did he get fired Lo- losing because it, of the whole? They were, a mix, they were a, mi- a mix of everything, okay. but it was they were terrible. They were that terrible. Would they win like seven games? That yeah, year? but they got worse with Kenny Payne. Yeah, but I, yes, bad. but terrible. All right, boys, let's wrap it up. We appreciate you guys for joining us this week if you're watching on youtube you can like subscribe comment there you can do the same if you're listening via podcast whether that's on apple spotify or anywhere else that you get your podcast once again as always we appreciate you guys for joining us and we will see you back here next week thank you for listening to on the bluff if you enjoyed this episode leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts also like and subscribe to bluff city media's youtube page Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports and how you can become an insider.